the infernal devices sin one take one <laughs> So, back in uh, May last year, the whole Shadowhunter fandom was buzzing like for the news of uh, an alleged adaptation of the Infernal Devices um, and they were saying that the Constantin film would be the one that produced the Mortal Instruments and City of Bones, the movie uh, would, also do, would also develop a series for the Infernal Devices for BBC3 um, and they were saying that it would be more accurate to the books and that it would be um, they would ha wouldn't have to do with uh, the Shadowhunter series, the one uh, the series, like the actual series, uh, or the the movie that will, had already been uh, produced. So we were all really excited, but since then nothing has been heard, nothing has been confirmed, neither from Cassandra Clare nor the BBC Three nor the Constantine film. So we really don't know what's happening with us, and I just really really hope that this whole business hasn't been dropped and is, is just like developing and being uh, discussed I hope because having mentioned that the Infernal Devices are one of like is one of my favorite book series ever this video will be about the Dreamcast, my Dreamcast of the Infernal Devices series uh, if it will someday be done. I hope it should be done because it's such a gorgeous series and the potential it has to be dazzling. So without further to say, let's start. I haven't done all the roles because like there are some that like I didn't do Gary Lightwood, I didn't do Benedict Lightwood, I didn't do Sophie, uh, the Vampire de Quincy, I didn't do some of them but I did, I think I did the basic ones. First actor and first role the one of Charlotte Brownwell. Charlotte Brownwell is the one who runs the institute and she's like this protective uh, woman who basically runs the institute. So uh, I, w I wanted for her an actress who had this uh, thing that came out of her that she um, was protective in, in, in front of others and uh, good and sweet and everything and made you feel good and uh, uh, when you felt insecure she was there to like make you feel better. So. For this role, I thought about Carrie Mulligan. You might have seen her from Far From the Mudding Crowd and Northanger Abbey, but I think that she has that like, mom look, that like how your mom makes you feel, or anyway, your parents uh, or your guardians, that like you're okay with the world, that everything is good in the world. So I think that she's perfect for that role because she gives off that vibe that she will protect you no matter what. Second character, second cast in my cast, Henry Brownwell. For the role of Henry Brownwell, I want someone who looked like goofy and um, in his own world, good and uh, sweet and red-headed, obviously. So for the role, I chose Eddie Redmayne. He really reminds me like this sort of guy, especially because like um, in the roles I have seen him, he's kind of like that. So you may have seen him in Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find, you might have seen him in Tess of the D'Urbervilles and also in Danish Girl, even though he was completely different there. I haven't seen the movie, but I know it's him. Next role in casting in my special amazing dream cast is Jessamine Lovelace. I'm not sure about her surname, but for this role, I wanted a blonde actress. I didn't really care about this role so much, but I thought I should put her because her role, like she's really, she's pretty important in the institute from point to on. And anyway, her presence is pretty acute, like in the whole book series. So for this role, I wanted to put Gabriella Wilde, but Gabriella Wilde is pretty old for this part. She's like 30 or so, and uh, she would have been perfect, like honestly. I need to search for another one, so I chose Catherine, Catherine Newton. You might have seen Catherine Newton in the BBC adaptation of Little Women. So it would be convenient for the BBC to cast her because like he's, she's already in the actress that they have cast, so they know her already in the production. So you see what I've done there? I've actually helped them. Yeah, I'm so good. I chose her because I don't really care about her character, but anyway, I think that specifically in this picture, like, she really resembles Jessamine. She really gives off that vibe of a spoiled girl. Um, so I think she would be really good at the part. 
and I think she also had that has a sweet face. She would also be good like for the sweet parts of Jessamine and the desperate parts and the romantic parts and everything. Next character is the one of Magnus Bane, my beloved Magnus Bane. So for this role, I chose basically the the actor that had been chosen for the movie of the City of Bones, which and his name is Godfrey Gao, Godfrey. Gail, Go Go Godfrey, I don't know this guy anyway. I think he was perfect. I didn't really like the actor that they had chose for the Shadowhunter series. I haven't seen the Shadowhunter series, but I didn't like him. Uh, I think that the Magnus Bane from the movie was much better. His style, different being, and he it was much more close to the Magnus Bane I had imagined, so I'll be choosing him again. Next uh, role I'm casting is the one of Nate, Nathaniel Gray. Nathaniel Gray is... Tessa's other Tessa's stupid brother. For this role, I wanted someone who looks naive and sweet and good, but there is a bit of a spoiler here, so if you want to skip this part, if you haven't um, like read all three of the books, you want you'll want to skip this like ten seconds, twenty seconds, just to avoid any spoilers. So for this role, I wanted like someone who looks like that will that he will betray you that he will mess up the whole movie basically because that's what Nathaniel did he just stood there and did stupid stuff for nothing absolutely nothing so I chose Dylan Sprayberry and him from Tin Wolf he played Liam but like he didn't he wasn't bad in there or at least for things I saw I haven't finished the series actually <laughs> he wasn't bad there but he had a sweet face and he had a face that someone could easily trick that the that was the impression that he gave to me. So his face popped in my mind basically. I don't know how I wasn't even thinking about it. I will I'm not even watching Tin Wolf right now. I'm watching Vampire Diaries. You may you may know already. Next role is the one of the bad guy. The one of the bad guys, Axel Mortman. For this role, I chose Ben Barnes. I don't know why, but Ben Barnes has this reputation of taking all the bad roles in movies, except for like from those I know. He was also in Narnia and he played Prince Caspian, but he wasn't bad in that. But anyway, he has played a lot of a bunch of like bad roles. Like he has played Dorian Gray, which ended in a complete catastrophe. In Six of Crows, I think he was bad. I'm not sure. But anyway, he has this reputation of taking all the roles for bad guys. And I don't know why, since he's like he's so sweet in real life, or at least he seems so. By the way, I'm giving him the bad guy role once again. I'm sorry, Ben Barnes, I know you're really disappointed from my choice. But what you're gonna do? You're like identical to Axel Mortman. Like, I'm not even kidding. I know, right? Like, ugh. next role. Oh my god, we're right on the top three roles. The roles of my heart. Next role is Jam. Jam was a mess to find a role for Jam. Like, it was so difficult because, like, Jam is, I think, from Hong Kong. And anyway, he had the specific look characteristics on his face, and it wasn't so easy to find, like, because he wasn't European or something. He finds someone that looked from those parts, and it was pretty difficult because, like, all the actors I found were identical to the members of the BTS band. And I didn't want someone like that because like Jem is a shadow hunter and he must look tougher even though like he was sick and everything but he looked tougher I mean like ugh. I was panicking for this role because I knew who would be perfect for it and that would have been Keanu Reeves when he was young but Keanu Reeves now is older and he can't possibly play a 20 year old boy so. So I started searching actors or at least people like who would fill in the uh, things I needed, and I found this guy, Aaron Berners, who I think isn't even an actor. I think he's like a musician, a model, I don't know exactly. Like, he resembles Jem, he could be our Jem, right? I mean, he isn't like that bad, and I think if he also dyed his hair, like, I think Aaron Berners would be nice, because like, in these movies they, they usually take new young actors like that they're launching this actors so he would he could like start a career in acting so I'm suggesting him now for Will Herendale one of my favorite book characters ever in the story of book characters I would choose for my beloved Will Herendale who is amazing and I love him so much I would choose Louis Partridge. I saw him in Anola Holmes, you might have seen him as well. When I saw him, he, I was like, oh my god. And then I saw like some interviews with his hair, like it was shorter his hair. Um, and 
he was so much weird, like his jawline, uh, his jaw, like generally his jaw and his face, oh my god, he resembled so much Will. I was shooketh because he was so much like Will and I just found, I just find him perfect for this role. I, perhaps a couple of years should pass for him to do Will uh, because I think he's 20 years old or so and um, Will I think was 17, 18, somewhere around that. So perhaps he should be a couple of years older than that just to like build up a bit and uh, some muscle but I think if he did that he would be perfect for this role and I can't stop saying that Lee Partridge should be cast as Will if they eventually do the Infernal Devices series. Last role, leading role especially, is the one of Tessa Gray. Tessa Gray is our protagonist, she's our girl, she's the... she has the spotlights on herself and everything. Oh my god, I didn't show you the book. The book is this. The book is the first one. This is the first book, Clockwork Angel, then comes Clockwork prince and then comes clockwork princess okay <laughs> telling you that for the role of Tessa Gray I was about to choose Nina Dobrev you might have seen Nina Dobrev in the vampire diaries like she's Elena Gilbert she's like the leading role again but Nina Dobrev is too old for the part again she's I think she's 20 going on 30 or 30 I'm not sure uh, but anyway for the role of Tessa Gray who's who's me no, I'm kidding. I didn't choose me, even though I would love I would love that because I would be with Lee Partridge and everything. But no, I didn't choose me. Unfortunately, I started searching and came across Mackenzie Foy. I've seen her from Twilight and The Nutcracker, and I think she would be perfect for the role because like she has the blue gray eyes and the brown hair and everything. And like in this picture, for example, uh, where she is in The Nutcracker, I think. Um, she just gives off so many Tessa vibes with the hair and the. Uh, and the dress and everything and so when I saw that I was like oh my god that's Tessa for you so I think she would be great for that so yeah okay so that's my dream cast for the Infernal Devices series I hope you enjoyed I sure did it's it's really fun doing these things um so if you enjoyed let me know let me know if you want more videos like this let me know if you have any song requests even like uh, I'm open to that and uh, so that's that. Okay, so I'll see you next time. Bye! And that's a wrap. Okay, people, we got it. We got it. Yeah.